Okay, so this is probably something I feel like, I feel like this might even just be a separate, separate video on its own because it's kind of a tricky and confusing aspect of it. So when you go to order the kit, it asks you if you want to upgrade to their power steering where they supply the rack. So you don't need to use the rack from the donor car. And I think I did that. I can't remember the, re the specific reason why, but I, I, I think I did it just to make it easier. And I'm, I'm glad because you get a new steering rack. So there you go, there's the new steering rack. Right, okay. So my donor's a 96 Mustang GT. What they don't tell you is that this rack is from an 8793 Mustang GT. And I only know that because I ordered tie rods for a 96 and they came and they didn't fit. And then that made me think. And the other reason why, so this is the other thing that's, that you have to do. When I got it, I tried to put it, I tried to put the spacer, so they, this comes in the kit, a spacer and a bolt and nut to put it in these mounts here. So I tried to put this spacer through the bushing. This is the bushing here that was in the rack when it came here. But as you can see here, spacer does not go in there. So then I thought, okay, which is odd. So then I thought I got to order some new bushings. So I thought, well, I'll just put polyurethane bushings in. That'll be the perfect time. So these are actually for a 96, but they fit in this and they, they come in two halves. So there's, a, and these are, you know, so you can see the part number. You have to order this box. Part number K8422 Master Pro bushings and they're made in the USA, which is surprising. Um, so when you then now look, when you, the, this fits in the middle of that, and then this in two halves will go into the steering bushing. And then if you look, the steering bushing will then fit, well, the rack will fit in here. So that's how you have to do that. Now I also had to even drill these holes out a little bit to fit the bolt of day supply, so. But anyway, so you're not confused and so you can get through that. Uh, that's what you have to do. You you have to remove and these I didn't take much to remove them a pair of channel locks like that and uh, Took them right out. So you just got to grab them and, and move them back and forth. They'll pop out the back um, So if you're questioning that That's what it is. You got to put different bushings in there and if you order tie rods order 87 and 83 tie rods don't pay attention to don't no matter what donor if you're using a donor car no matter what donor car they don't for some reason they don't tell you that you hey you better order tie rods for this and this is the part number you should order so and they don't tell you where the rack came from but i'm telling you so there you go all right quick, quick breakdown of what was done today steering rack was installed Earlier in this video, I talked about the bushings. Make sure you change the bushings out. Or if you get that rack from Factory 5, uh, it's gonna have those odd bushings in there. Who knows where they came from? I don't know where they sourced this rack at. Uh, it says made in China on the box, so. Um, if you use your donor steering rack, you should just replace the bushings anyway. They're 10 bucks, they're pretty inexpensive. Also, when you go to order tie rods, I'll give you the Moog part number if you want it. I found them on eBay for 20 bucks a piece. So Moog ES2150RL. And uh, that tie rod should work. Now, what they tell you is that you need distance 53 and 1 16th inch. And when I measure 53 and 1 16th without the outer tie rod on, that's about from where the tie rod connects to the spindle on both sides. That's the width of it. So I don't know if maybe 
you have to take, I've got to get those high rods first and throw them on and see if I can get that distance. Um, yeah, so that's where I got on that. And I bolted it. They don't give you a torque spec for these bolts either, the rack bolts to the frame. I torqued them to 60 foot pounds. So 60, I tightened them with ratchet and wrench and then I torqued them to 60 and they rotated when I torqued them. So I was like, I'm happy with that. What else did I just say? Let's, let us me stop and remove you from this, the tripod for this one. So I got my pedals. These are just replacement pedals from late model restoration. They're not that expensive. So new rubber covers here for the clutch brake and they look pretty good, I think. And then I got a new accelerator pedal. I drilled a hole and put the pin in and it has this weird angle to the side. But when I sit down in here and I put my foot on to like heel and toe, it matches up pretty nicely. So I'm gonna leave that for now because I like it. Uh, it looks, like I said, looks kinda odd, but we'll see. Also got my spring isolators in. And this is gonna be one of the next projects and I figure I'd start talking about it here because that's gonna be installed on that rear end in this spot here. Of course, after I move all these aluminum panels. Now, what I'm testing out here is you're supposed to take the rubber isolator that comes stock and cut it so that you can place it on the perch and have it sit down on it. Now, what they don't tell you to do is put it on both sides of the metal that goes around. I like that though, because then you don't get this metal, you don't get a metal on metal contact there. So if the spring's going up or down, I don't know how much it's gonna travel. This is all kind of unknown. I do not know. I've never used spring perches like this before. So I'm hoping, we'll see when it, so I'm gonna try, I have actually two sets of spring isolators on ordered. One got all delayed, so I ordered another set and I got these ones sooner. So I still have another set of spring isolators that I might use, but we'll see. Um, or I might use one polyurethane, one rubber one on each side. We're gonna, I'm gonna have to test some stuff out. But essentially that's what I'm gonna go with uh, because I think, I think that'll be nice to have Rub, you know, to have no metal on metal contact there. That's what I'm thinking. And then these are gonna be for the lower control arm. So that's what I've done today. Um, yeah. Another, it, it, it's very little stuff here and there, you know, at this point. Uh, as you go on, I think they have you connect. So the steering shaft, you know, to the, to the firewall and then up into the steering column area. Then they have you move on to some of the pedal box aluminum, floor aluminum, I believe. And then they have you go to the back to the fuel tank. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's it for now. They give you these, oh, just so you, so you know my thought process on this. And so that if you're going through the same thought, they give you these extenders. And I believe these extenders are for the stock inner tie rods. If I reading the instructions. So if you get the rack from factory five, you do not need to worry about these. I think again, we'll, we will see when, when it comes down to putting the, you know, outer tie rods on and seeing how they all bolt up. So yeah, there you go. Another day. All right, for, so for the next part on the steering system, uh, I've attached, so there's two U-joints that come with the steering kit. And they're in these little boxes. One is a 15840, and the other one is a 15839. Uh, this is the 15840. It's the one with the bigger end, the one inch end. And then the 15839 is the one that goes on the spline of the steering rack. So I've attached that to the spline of the steering rack. Then you have to, there's a three different shafts that come with um, the kit. There's this one, which is solid, you can see there, in a D, double D shape. 
uh, and then there, and it's a little smaller. And then there's this hollow one, which is a double D shape, and I think it's about one inch. And then there is this one that has a little threaded end and a solid end. I don't know what this one's for yet, but the hollow one. A hollow one you have to take the big one inch end, take the set screw out, line it up with the end there, and then mark and drill a little recess so that the set screw can screw into that. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Okay, now, they have you slide the U-joint on and then mark it with like a Sharpie felt tip marker or something. Um, Another way you can do it, which I think is probably better uh, for marking most things, this isn't just for this one thing, but for most things. So like on something uh, silver in color like that, you could take your felt tip marker or your Sharpie and you color uh, almost like using a machinist dye, which is, you can buy also machinist dye, which is usually blue, um, but you could use your felt tip marker in case you don't have a machinist dye. It's much easier to get a Sharpie. Uh, and blacken out a little area that you want to mark. And then this little, these things are the greatest for drilling holes. They're just transfer punches. So you can buy, you can buy a whole set of transfer punches that are all different sizes. You can get them cheap like Harbor Freight. And then you just match size of the transfer punch to the size of the hole that you want to drill right there use your mallet to hit a nice little I don't know if you can see it but there's a nice little indentation there and then you can even take it back off hit it again make it a little bigger if you need to um, but then it's easier easier to drill a hole where you want it. So it says to go 3 16 inch drill bit followed by 5 16 I started even smaller. I started with 3 30 seconds or 7 64 and I got the hole. I got it going and then it's not perfectly round but it's good enough to you slide this on. Now it's got a recess in there for the set screw. And that's pretty much what you're trying to do. All right, so, once you get all the shafts in, the upper shaft, which is the next section, has these two little recessed areas. So you wanna make sure there's these two little spring washers that fit inside that. So one goes in each one. And then that's what kind of holds it into the the hollow shaft that goes up to the pillow block on the steering column. All right, so once you get all the shafts installed, I'll show you what the upper shaft. They want you to just get it in there until where that spring clip is just in there. And there's then you get the two, and you gotta pound on the end a little bit with a nice rubber mesh. But then once you get that, you can tighten the set screws here on these bearings. And then what I did was I made sure that this joint, see if I can turn it better with my hand, was perfectly clear all the way from lock to lock. And this joint was perfectly clear lock to lock. And make sure it didn't bind. Now, in the manual they say that it shouldn't stick past that, but I don't see how you could get that unless maybe you got a little bit of play in here. I might mess with this a little bit more once I get the steering. The only thing that concerns me is it's not exactly straight. I feel like this should be over here a little bit. But we'll see. I'm gonna trust the process for now. 
Wait till I get the steering wheel installed. And then that should be it. Now, what I don't know, I think this goes here. I still need, that's pretty much it for the steering system, except for the tie rods. So this might be the end of this video until I get those tie rods. I should be getting them tomorrow. So, um, unfortunately that'll happen today. So yeah, that's it now for, for steering. Uh, so this might be the end of the, I might cover the tie rods in the next video.